situation we're trying to contain. We are in lockdown. Ridley Scott's original Alien movie presented a really grounded view of the future. This wasn't holograms and touchscreens. It's chunky analog push-button technology. This is a world of CRT, not LCD. Early in development, our artists studied the work of Ron Cobb, who was one of the original concept artists on the film. And the goal was that if we could understand his process, we would be able to expand on the universe while still remaining faithful to the original source. This lo-fi sci-fi approach doesn't just inform the visuals, it also has a big effect on how we design the gameplay. If you take the motion tracker, for example, it's big and it's heavy, you can't hold it at the same time as a weapon. And all it does is tell you the movement of an object on a 2D plane, and even then, only on a small cone in front of you. In order to stay faithful to the source, we set ourselves a rule. We wouldn't build anything that couldn't have been built on the original set in 1979. Everything in our game conforms to this retro future aesthetic. The first objective was to strip back the UI as much as possible. For the on-screen elements that we do have, we had to look at a lot of different options to try and recreate the softness and fuzziness that the technology of the 70s presented. The technique that we found most effective was actually to take gameplay footage and UI elements and record them onto VHS tape and play them back through an old portable television and on its way we would distort the cables and stamp on the tape and generally destroy equipment in the process. And once we got that back into the game, we found that it didn't just look authentic, it was authentic. This is a game set in the future, but baked in the past. It's a place which we can really relate to. It's also a world in which technology won't save you. Sound is a massive component of any horror experience, and that's definitely the case with Alien. We wanted to be as authentic as possible when it came to recreating the sound of the original music, and so we put together our own orchestra from the best musicians that we knew around London, including some who had actually played on the original recordings with Jerry back in the 1970s.